So good evening, everybody. Welcome to Channeling Korea. Today is October the 18th, 2020. It's a Sunday. I just want to have a very brief introduction of the rest of this um, session. I'm going to begin by just taking everybody into a short meditation. And whenever the um, energy is strong, then I'll go right into the channeling. And then afterwards, the there's going to be a um, question and answer period. And for those who are not too sure who Kriya is, Kriya is part of the um, a group of, um, they, I call them helper entities, is that they're, they are the ones who have chosen to not, well, most of the time anyways, is to not incarnate in a body. They actually um, decide to take on the role of helpers, meaning that they do their job is to prepare the playground for us to design the playground, um, playground like Earth. Um, and there are a lot of other uh, planets who are similar to Earth, like all, all, all over the galaxies. And um, for, for um, souls who want to incarnate into a body to have an experience, not necessarily a human experience, but a um, some sort of a, something similar to, to what's going on on Earth. So that's why um, there are those helper uh, souls or helper beings who decide that they want to um, only do the, 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 the more behind the scenes mechanical parts. Of course, um, they always have the, the the choice to incarnate and have an um, an, an experience of taking on a form. Uh, however, as far as I'm being shown, um, Cryon has been just doing the the the, the server part and just uh, and also Cryon's whole group is to deal with um, the the magnetics of the of the playground. So magnetics, it actually it's it's really about um, how the 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 playground itself, the, the earth itself, responds to our um, thought patterns. So that's actually how how that is. So that's what Cryon does, and Kriya is part of that soul group. So Kriya, um, from what I, I gathered, Kriya is more about um, looking after the, the, the grid lines. Um, grid lines are actually like meridian, meridian lines um, of the, the planet itself because Earth is actually a being, uh, not a being like us. Um, it's a very special kind of being that are that host um, souls like me, like you, who actually decided to come here, take on a body, and to co-create with one another and have this this kind of uh, uh, human experience. So that's what who Korea is. So without further ado, let's just go on into the meditation. So let's just uh, turn our attention inwards. So just instead of putting focus on things that are happening outside of us, is to actually just turn that around and just start to only pay attention to what's happening inside your body. And more specifically, just follow your own breath. Follow the rhythm of your own breathing. And just do um, a couple of breathing in deeply. And when you can breathe in no longer, just breathe out.
as much as you can to start to elongate your breath. Breathing in, taking in energy from the universe. And as you breathe out, breathe out anything that does not support you to be here in this moment. And the more you start to breathe out and let go of anything that is interfering with you being here in this moment, the more you can start to relax your body. And as you relax your body, your mind would tend to start to just feel more relaxed as well. And if there is any thoughts coming in, then just allow it to be in. No need to try to um, chase that thought. So allow any thoughts to come in, to simply come in and just leave as easily as it came in choose to pay attention to what's happening inside yourself. Set the intention to let go of being in your head. Instead, start to focus in your heart. Just imagine that you are stepping inside this energetic elevator. And as you step inside, just look for the button that has the symbol of your heart on it and press the button. And simply allow this energetic elevator to take you away from your mind, from your thinking, from your thoughts. To simply Go all the way into your heart. It may be a little strange at first because we're not used to being in our heart. And maybe sometimes it feels a little strange to have no thoughts in your mind. You don't quite know how to handle having no thoughts. That's okay. Choose to quiet down your mind. And when you simply focus on your heart, you may find that it is easier to let go of your thoughts. And when you're in your heart, it's easier for you to focus on just being with yourself. Being in with yourself is actually a very important job. Most people spent their entire life not wanting to be with themselves. They absolutely have no idea how to be with themselves. There are so many thoughts going through their mind and that is what they know. For them, their thoughts has become them. They think that they are their thoughts. 
And if they think certain thoughts, then those thoughts must be right. They must be who they are then in order for them to think those thoughts. However, that is not true. Thoughts are kind of like, they're like a fragrance. It's like when you walk through a park, you're going to smell flowers. If you walk through the grass that's just been mowed, you're going to smell grass freshly mowed lawn smell. And if you walk through a neighborhood that has all sorts of cooking, people cooking, you will be able to smell the food. So thoughts are a little bit like that. It depends on where your, <clears throat> your environment is. Where you are, there are these thoughts floating around and your mind simply pick up on those thoughts. And if you're around the same people all the time, same house, same friends, same housemates, and those thoughts that you're able to perceive would be very similar. However, if you choose to go and move to a different neighborhood, have a completely new set of friends, new set of people that you hang around, then you may have different thoughts that comes into your mind. Your job, your job as a soul. It's really to look through all the thoughts and pick out the ones that resonate with you. And when you start to have thoughts that really resonate with you. And those are the ones that you want to focus on. Those are the ones that you actually want to find out more about, to dream more about. To have more discussions with people about the thoughts that really resonate with you and really attracts you. And the ones that don't resonate with you, that really is boring uh, or have no interests, or you have no interests at all, then those are the thoughts that you simply let go. As soon as they come in, you sense, oh, not really interested. And you don't, you don't try to resist them. You simply recognize that, okay, thoughts, not my thoughts, because there's no resonance. So I'm simply going to allow these thoughts to come in and leave. without making any difference in my life, in my being. And it is the same thing when you want to shift your thought patterns. You 
even though you may have resonated with a certain thought pattern. For example, a thought pattern like you are this body and this body is you. But as time goes on, you start to hear about other thoughts, other thoughts that says you are more than your body. You are eternal essence embodied. You have a body, but you are not your body. You may hear this thought. The first time you hear it, you may just think, oh, this is a fluke. However, if this thought, if this new thought has any resonance at all with your soul, you would start to maybe not put too much attention on it at first because this new thought is so different from your existing thought pattern. However, somewhere within you, it created a connection and you remember it. And then after a while, you start to forget about it. And then it may come as a surprise the next time you hear about it. And you remember that some portion, somewhere deep inside you, on some unconscious level, that you remember that, oh, this thought, I remember having heard it before. And then you simply check in. Is this a new thought pattern, something that I am ready to incorporate into my life? And you may or may not be ready to incorporate it, and that's okay. And then the next time you will hear it again. So thoughts that has some sort of truth or some sort of resonance with your soul, with the true part of who you are. No matter how different it may be from your current belief system, some part of you would recognize it and you would feel a resonance towards it even though you're not ready to incorporate it in your life, you would hear it again and again and again. And the more your soul starts to get to the point where you are ready to integrate it, the more you will start to hear those messages. Those new thoughts coming over and over again. It is as though your soul knows that this new piece of information, even though right now you on a conscious level is not ready to incorporate it, but it is there 
to jog your memory. And your soul never gives up. It may take 10 years. It may take 20 years. For some people, it may take a lifetime for the same new information to come in. At first, maybe every five years you hear about it. First time you hear it, no, not ready. You heard it. It has, you have a, a reaction to it, but your soul just is not ready to incorporate it in your life at that moment. So you will consciously forget about it, but unconsciously, it is there. It is still there. Nothing had been lost. And that is all you are supposed to do, is to simply hear it once. So that the next time, when this new piece of information is being repeated to you, five years down the road, or 10 years down the road, you're in a different place. You have a different experience of life. And you may or may not be ready to incorporate that new piece of information that is still resonate with your soul. And five years afterwards, maybe you're ready to incorporate it, maybe you're not. But your soul does not give up, never. It will simply keep sending you this information, this reminder, until one day, who knows what happens. Maybe you will come across something like what we are experiencing now that all of a sudden we have time to stay home. We have time. To look at things that we never had time to look at before. <clears throat> and because after your soul has reminded you maybe a, a hundred times or maybe even a thousand times in so many different ways, one day you will catch a break. There will be a crack, a crack in your existing thought system and you will start to look for a different way of understanding life. Because frankly, you have gotten to the end of your rope. I cannot keep this, I cannot st keep repeating the same life lessons over and over and over again. And this time, maybe you are ready to do something different. And your soul will have a chance to bring more, more information to you give you more insights, allow to actually communicate with you at a deeper level. You may still not understand 
or your soul is trying to get you to realize that somewhere inside you start to create a doubt about what you know about life because things are not making sense right now. And so you may be ready to hear the guidance that is coming from the depth of who you are. I think that just about sums up where humanity is right now. And we're here to remind you That is all okay. Just because you're ready to allow something new, a new way of life, a new way of experiencing what being human is about. That does not mean that all the things that you have done before is wasted or wrong in any way or shape at all. Nothing is wrong. Every bit of experience that you have had, whether it has been good or whether it has been had, or maybe it has even been horrible, or maybe it has simply been fantastic. What a joy ride. No matter what it is that you have experienced in the past, they are all part of your story. They are all part of your creation. Mm, does not matter whether your father loved you. It does not matter whether your mother loved you. It does not even matter whether your spouse loved you. It does not matter whether your children loves you. It does not matter whether your people, your circle loves you. None of that matters. Only one thing matters. That one thing is really your relationship with who you truly are. All the other things, the family, the parents, children, spouse, friends, enemies, all of those are simply mirrors, mirrors that your soul has created to co-create with you so that you can get to know who you truly are. To really shake you up to look within. You 
even all the other past life experiences that you have remembered, or all the your ancestors, whether from your mother's side or from your father's side, all their experiences that has been passed down to your DNA. None of those matters. I know that may be a bold statement. None of those matters. The only thing that matters is your relationship with who you truly are. And if you have messed up any other relationship at all, it still does not matter. If you can get this one relationship right, which is your relationship with who you truly are. Who you truly are is not this person that you have lived with all your life. It's not your identity. No matter how successful you may be, no matter how much of a failure you may think you are, no matter how many kingdoms you have overseen, that does not matter. It does not matter how many millions of dollars you have. It does not matter if you don't even have 50 cents to your name. None of that matters. Only one thing matter. Your relationship with who you truly are. I know nobody wants you to know that. Your parents want you to be a good child. Your parents want you to follow what they think is the best way of fitting in society. And your spouse would have certain expectation of you. They would want you to be, to behave a certain way. Your friends would want you to behave in a certain way. Your loved ones would want you to behave in a certain way. Your government definitely wants you to behave in a certain way. None of that matters. What matters is truly this. Are you doing what is inspiring you from the depth 
of who you are. When you remember who you are, who you truly are, apart from this body, apart from the name that you call yourself, apart from the clothes that you wear, apart from the things you do in your life, Are you truly in touch with who you are within? Do you have that connection? Do you have that connection to the depth of who you are? Do you remember that you are eternal essence embodied? And what does that mean? That's just words, English words being strung together. But the vibration of that is this. When you are in your heart, do you feel that connection? Do you feel that connection of who you are as source? Do you have that connection with who you are as a creator? Do you have that connection Are you doing the things that only you can do because you have that connection? This one thing is what has been disrupted for so long. For so long we have, we have been distracted by this. All the people around you All the relationships, all the events, all of those things that's happening in front of you, around you, all of those relationships are simply a distraction created precisely to distract you from developing this one relationship in a relationship with who you truly are. And if you are game to be a rebel, then let me suggest that the biggest, most important thing you can do is to simply go within and have that connection again. To truly only seek that connection. 
what your father, what your mother has ever said or not said, has ever done or not done, does not matter one bit. Whether your spouse was right for you or wrong for you, whether the government is good or bad, none of that matters. We were taught that we should. Mm. We should feel something about those. But the, the fact of the matter is no, none of that matters at all. It does not matter whether your daughter or your son loves you, whether they honor you, what is honor? Why do you need honor? Why would the creator source need honor? It is simply words that does not mean anything anymore. Words all these ideas are simply a smoke screen to distract you. You can enjoy the distraction as long as you want. That is, that is truly game that you're here to play. What is most important though, is simply to remember who you truly are, to establish that relationship that conscious relationship of who you truly are. And then you know that none of the others, none of the other things matters. It does not matter how much money you have or don't have. It does not matter whether you live in the most beautiful house or not. It does not matter whether your parents are there to love you or not. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is right here, right now within your heart. Knowing who you truly are. And creating from that center. That is the only thing that matters. So simple. And yet, 
so out of reach for a lot of people. And you may want to know why. Why is this so hard? It's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be hard. Can you imagine everyone getting this? Everyone remembering who they truly are and they only act from that center. The show would be over. The school of earth would be over. Because we be so much connected with who we truly are that we remember that we don't need this planet anymore, that we don't need this body anymore. this level of understanding and remembering of who you truly are. Is what some people have been looking for. And look no further now. You don't need to look outside. You don't even have to be a vegetarian. You don't even have to be a breatharian. None of that matters. Simply choose to focus on one thing, one thing only. Always remember to ask yourself, what is my relationship with who I truly am? Do I accept who I truly am? Or do I have a story about it? Do I need to have the love of my parent? Or do I need to have the love of my children? Or do I need to have the love of my spouse. The truth is, you don't need any of this. You don't need love. You are love. When all the chaos is going on outside, the best place to be, no matter what is happening outside in the world, the best place to be is right here within your heart. to be completely at peace. 
remembering who you are. Being one with your with the depth of who you are. Letting go of all the other stories. All the other identities. They are simply force identification. You are not this body. You are not someone's daughter. You are definitely not someone's son. You're not someone's mother, nor are you someone's father. You are, you simply are. You have always been that and will always be that. Remember that part of you. the immovable part of you. And when thoughts come inside, do those thoughts support you to be who you truly are or not? When all the world is in chaos, be in the center, the center of who you truly are. And from there, You can quiet the storm because the storm is simply an illusion. And peace and love and joy is the only truth within. And this is our gift for you this evening. To feel that center within yourself. A reminder of who you truly are. Beyond this body. In this moment. Know that you are a spirit within a body. And all is well. All that you need is coming to you.
and that is who you truly are. We love you. We love you. We love you unconditionally. Creator, creator of your life, creator of life. That is who you truly are. Thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you.